Okay, this video is going to go over how to configure your uh, web server for SSL specifically. Well, we're going to do uh, the default certificates, then we'll create a self-signed certificate, and then we will uh, get a certificate signed by a certificate authority. So the first thing we want to do is, uh, we, you should have already uh, installed or enabled SSL, uh, and we want to test it by making sure it works when we connect to the page over HTTPS. So you should put your IP address in there, and you should get a warning. It says, hey, the connection is untrusted. We can look at the technical details. Uh, basically, it's not trusted because it's self-signed. It's only valid for um, the local domain, so it doesn't match our name. And this one's actually expired because this VM's kind of old. So we're going to go ahead and say, I understand the risks. Add exception. We could look at your certificate if we wanted uh, to see that it's signed with localhost.localdomain, uh, issued to localhost.localdomain. So this is the default certificate that comes with um, comes with uh, SSL when you install it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a self-signed certificate uh, and key. Uh, we're going to do that using the gen key command. So you put gen key and then you want to put your made up lab domain name. And this should be your first initial, last name, and all lowercase. Don't put any capital letters. Hit enter. It's going to say I already have a key because I've already done this and I forgot to delete the key. Uh, if you screw up the first time and have to do it again, you get the same message. It, it tells you where the key is, so you can delete that uh, key uh, from that place with the remove command. So rm, and then it was etsy, pki, tls, private, and then key. Yes, we want to remove it. <clears throat> so now we're going to run the gen key command, uh, and it's going to say, okay, you're going to generate a key pair. This is where we're going to store it at. Uh, you might want to take note of those locations. You need to do at least medium grade. If you try to do insecure, my certificate authority is not going to agree to sign your certificate later on. And now it's going to generate the key. Uh, sometimes some the these little gooey things tell you, move your mouse around. That'll make the key generation go faster because we can get more, more randomness that way. So I don't know if it actually goes faster or not. Uh, but it gives you something to do while it's uh, taking the time to do the thing it's doing. So... I'll keep moving the mouse around, generating random bits. Uh, this may take some time. Round, 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 round we go. I was going to try to talk the whole time, but I got tired of that. So, uh, yeah. All right, almost halfway there. I'll probably skip ahead in the video if uh, you're bored. percent no, 20 percent 40 percent left 35 percent left yeah I don't think make it goes any faster All right, so uh, the first time around, actually, we do not want to send this to a certificate authority, so say no. Uh, we do not want to encrypt the private key. If you encrypt the private key, then when you restart the server, uh, you have to put the private key passphrase in there, so we don't want to do that. We're going to put some stuff in here. U.S. for the country code. State will be Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Locality, Harrisburg. Org, I just put CNT, and it should already have your common name, which is your domain name down there. I'm using tab to go between the fields. Hit uh, enter for next, and now it says, hey, uh, the certificate was written to this location, and the key was written to this location. So we need to, uh, we need to tell our web server now where to find those certificates. So we do that by editing the config file for SSL.conf, for SSL, which is in this location, etsy, httpd, conf.d, SSL.conf. And we want to find the certificate line and the key line, so I'm going to hit the slash key, 
and type the word key with a capital K because I know that'll help me find it. And that took me down to the private key. So I'm going to change this. It says Etsy PKI TLS private. So I'm going to change this to match the name of my key, which was www.rll.lab. So I'm going to change that. Now I'm going to go up here and change my certificate. Do the same thing. And then I will restart Apache. And it worked. This this thing here is a warning. It's not an error. So don't say, hey, it didn't work. I got a I got an error. That's not that's a warning. If it says okay, it worked. So now I'm going to go back to HTTPS. Uh, I got a, a warning again. Let's look at the technical details. Now it says uh, it, is, it is not trusted because it is self-signed and it's only valid for the domain name. So we connected by IP address. Uh, the domain name uh, is what is in the certificate. So that's expected at this point. We'll add an exception. Um, not permanently. We'll confirm the exception. And now uh, we got to the page. And I probably should have uh, viewed that certificate. So let's go view the certificate. Uh all right, we'll go view the certificate this way. So look, our certificate is issued by me with a common name of me. So that's why uh, it's still not trusted. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get the certificate signed. Well, first off, let me go back in here and show you what happens when you screw up your file. So many people have typos in here where they have like cert instead of CRT. Uh, and when that happens, when you try to restart your uh, server, it failed. It says, oh, hey, it failed. And then it tells you, this line tells you, hey, this file does not exist. And you can, should be able to look at it and say, oh, yeah, I spelled it wrong. So we'll fix that. We'll fix that. And start the service. Lots of people have it, lots of typos and point to their file in the wrong way. So if you get it failed there and you can't figure it out, let me know. I hope you got in the lab. So now we want to um, CD to our directory where our private key is, which is this directory, Etsy PKI TLS private. And if we do LS, we have a key called rll.lab.key. We also have some other certs from other stuff I've done. We're going to generate a CSR. I'm going to delete this CSR which is already there because that's an old one uh, from when I was testing. Basically, if we want to get our certificate signed by a certificate authority, we need to submit a certificate signing request to that certificate authority. That's what CSR stands for. So we could rerun through the gen key uh, process to generate a new key. And uh, then when it said, do you want to send this to a certificate authority? Say yes, we could do that. But then we have to wait for it to generate the key again. And I don't want to wait. Uh, uh, for that again, so I'm going to use an open SSL command um, to generate a CSR and the way you do that is you basically type open SSL req for request dash n to tell it what file is the input file which that's going to be the key and then dash out to tell it where you want it to write the output file which is going to be the CSR so then we'll just name it the same thing it was named before I deleted it and now we're going to hope that that's the actual correct command because I didn't check check it on my uh, reference right immediately before I did that, so it might fail. Uh, but yeah, that didn't work. So let's see. Let me go uh, look at my lab sheet that I just put the command in. Oh, it should have been dash key instead of dash... Uh, in and we did a dash new. So yeah, great job, Rich. Good job. Uh, good job remembering uh, what you just wrote 20 minutes ago. So there you go. That should work. It's going to ask us these questions again. We're going to answer them again. Uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, locality Harrisburg, organization CNT. Leave that one blank. Common name is going to be www.rlwell.lab. Enter. You'll put your own domain name in all lowercase, and we'll leave everything else blank. So now if we look, I have a CSR, and we're going to want to display the contents of that CSR with Q. 
cat. So now we get this text. We're going to copy this. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to go to my certificate authority in the browser. It's ca.cnt.lab slash search serve. Uh, we're going to request a certificate, a advanced certificate request. We're going to paste it and we're going to hit submit. Right, my certificate authority is set to automatically um, sign your certificate. So we want to download the base 64 encoded version. We're going to hit download certificate. And that's going to download it to some place. We're going to save it. It saved it to, I'm logged in as student right now. So it probably saved it to student downloads. Downloads. So if we look, I have a... I've done this before, so I have a bunch of extra crap in there you may not have. ls-lart shows you a long listing re reverse sorted by time. It includes all files. So if I do that, I see that my cert was cert new with parentheses 1. So I need this cert to make its way over to my um, directory where the certs are supposed to go. So I'm going to use the copy command to copy that file. Remember, I'm logged in as student. If you logged into the GUI in, as root, your files will be in slash root. Uh, home student downloads search new. Since that's parentheses, I have to escape the parentheses uh, with the slashes in front of it. And I want to copy that to Etsy PKI TLS certs. And I want to call it www.rlwell.lab.crt. That's what the SSL.conf is expecting that certificate to be called, and uh, we are about to overwrite the self-signed certificate with that new certificate. So we'll go ahead and hit enter, and it wants to know if we want to overwrite it, and we'll say yes. So now <clears throat> I have in my directory here, I have my cert that uh, we just downloaded from my certificate authority. So now if I connect to my web page, I should be using my certificate that is signed by my CA, which I don't know, it's not probably not going to show me again because I already added the exception. Yeah, so let's kill the browser and try that again. Yeah, I did not permanently store the, the exception, but I did, it did store it temporarily throughout the life of the session. So now it says it uses an invalidity, and it says, oh, it says invalid security certificate, and it's not trusted because it's self-signed. What? I got it signed by the certificate authority, right? It's right here. Oh, yeah, it's Linux. I need to restart the web server to see the new certificate. So now if we try it again, look at the technical details. It's like, oh, hey, now we get a different error. Now it says... It is not trusted because the issuer certificate is unknown. So that's cool. Uh, we can fix that. If we go back to my certificate authority. CA, that was not what I wanted. That's a default page. I want to cert serve. Right. Now we can download the CA certificate, install a CA certificate, and we want to trust websites. And we'll say OK. And now if we come over here and refresh, now technical detail says, oh, okay, now it is only untrusted because it you the certificate is for this domain name and you went by IP address. So we can fix that by editing the Etsy host file. And we will put an entry in here with our IP address. Once we have DNS working next week, this will work by default because we have DNS working. But right now, we don't have DNS working. So we will... Uh, put a host file entry in there. So now in theory, I should be able to go to www.rlwell.lab and I should not get a, a warning for this. Oh, check that out. Do you see how awesome that was? I was able to connect over SSL uh, using the browser without getting any warnings. So if we look at the certificate we have now, the common name matches what it's supposed to name. It's signed by MyCA. We added MyCA to the trusted certificate store, certificate authority list that we looked at earlier in the lab. So that is uh, what you need to, to get to in this lab. Uh, that, that's the state you need to get to. The next step, which I'm not going to demonstrate because I don't have a router, is we are going to put a NAT on your router and I'm going to connect from the outside 
to your web server. So do that step.